not disparagingly talking to them about your husband. Make sure that when you talk to your children, you do not complain about your husband. When you talk to your children, you do not grumble about your husband to your children. When you talk to your helper, baka mamaya yung helper din, sinisiraan mo yung husband mo sa helper mo. Alam mo, itong asawa ko talaga, ganito talaga to, ganyan talaga. Hanggang sa lumiliit yung pagtingin ng katulong, lumiliit yung pagtingin ng mga bata, dun sa mister mo. That should not be. You are to inculcate respect for your husband. Look at the last. Letter T. Take care to do all as unto the Lord. Maybe there are some wives listening to me right now and they're struggling. They're saying, wow, ang hirap naman itong tinuturo ni Brother Jurem. Please uh, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 2 and then chapter 3. I'd like to read this portion to you so that you may be encouraged. I hope you will be encouraged by this passage. 1 Peter talks about suffering Christians. Christians are suffering in the hands of civil authorities. Christians suffering in the hands of or, uh, evil masters. Christians suffering under uh, husbands who are not believers or who are doing things that make, it, make life difficult for them. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, look at verse 18. Tingnan yung verse 18. Paul addressing servants or slaves in respect to their masters. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect. Now, take note. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is... A gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. So you see, the Apostle Paul is not telling these servants or slaves to rebel. He's saying, you know, it could be that your suffering is part of God's will for your life. Don't just submit to your masters if they're good, if they're considerate, if they're kind, if they're gracious. No, submit to them even if they're opposite those virtues. And then look at his model or example. He says, For this you have been called, because Jesus Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He is grounding his admonition or his counsel on the work of Jesus Christ. He says, look at what happened to the Lord Jesus when he was here. He submitted to evil civil authorities. He submitted to, uh, to, to people who were not submissive to the Word of God. He continued to entrust his life to Jesus. And that's what he did to lay down an example for you to follow. And then now, if you move on to chapter 3, you'll see the connection now. Now let's look at the wives who have husbands who are not submissive to the Word of God. Chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Likewise. You see, you should take note of that small word, likewise. It means this still has some reference to what he previously said. Likewise. So in other words, you do this also. Just like uh, the, the slaves in their... Uh, relationship with their masters. Likewise, wives, this is how you are to relate to the authorities in the home, to your husband. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husband so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. So this is the encouragement. Letter T is take care to do all as unto the Lord. Your submission to your husband must be something that you do to the Lord. Let that attitude be in your mind. Lord, I'm going to do this for you. 
Please, women, wives, don't wait for your husband to become lovable, to become a leader, to be doing some things until uh, to, to be doing good things before you submit to him. Don't say, hindi ako magsasubmit sa'yo hanggat hindi, hindi ka affectionate, hanggat hindi ka nagiging gumagawa ng tamang mga decision, hanggat hindi ka leader dito sa ating mga anak. Hindi ako magsasubmit sa'yo. Saka na ako magsasubmit sa'yo kung karapat-dapat na talagang magsubmit sa'yo dahil mabait ka. You don't say that. You're saying, Lord, I'm going to submit to my husband even if he's not a leader, even if he's not lovable, even if he's not affectionate, because your word says so. I'll do it as unto the Lord. I'll follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Now you might say, Eh, Brad, baka naman umabuso yung husband ko. That's the reason why the Apostle Peter said, turn to verses 5 up to 6 of First Peter. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their husbands as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. So women... You will be recognized as being Sarah's children if you do good to your husbands, just as uh, what Peter says here in 1 Peter chapter 3. And in addition to that, if you do not fear anything that is frightening. In other words, if you don't say, ay nako nakakatakot sumunod dyan sa Bible, nakakatakot mag-submit sa husband ko, nakakatakot gawin yan, baka umabuso siya eh. Baka lalo pa siyang uh, gawin niya ito, gawin niya itong ganyan. Kaya nga sabi ng Biblia, don't be afraid. In other words, put your trust in God. If you obey God's word, pro problema ng Panginoong Diyos kung anong gagawin niya dun sa mister mo. Basta ang, ang importante, problemahin mo, gawin mo yung pinagagawa ng Panginoong Diyos sa'yo. That's what you need to do. That's what it means to submit. Again, Putting it all together, we have six things that the wives must do if they are to submit to their husbands. First, seek your husband's leadership. You undertake to maintain your husband's honor. B, bend your will to your husband's. M, make a home in support of your husband. I, Inculcate respect for your husband and tea. Take care to do all as unto the Lord. Wives, how do you measure against these duties? Are you doing this? Now, let me wrap up our study by just giving you again these applications. First of all, what comes to my mind as we get into passages like this. I see this as something very, very relevant for our church, not just for families. I know that the women's ministry are getting into some activity. They want to learn how to teach other women and they're inviting some uh, resource persons to do that for them, to help them, to train them. That's good. I'm not discouraging you from that. Maybe there are other women who really want, let's study doctrine, let's study these, uh, this, this particular book of the Bible, let's go to the book of Romans, we need to learn this as women. I'm not saying that's bad. Maybe there are some of you who are saying, maybe we should start to discover our spiritual gifts and use them for the, for the building up of the body of Christ. That's very good, you should continue in that. But, do not minimize or don't do all of these things to the neglect of the home. I believe if there is going to be some priority, we must follow the priority of the Apostle Paul. Women, I suggest, and I want you to think about this, especially the older women in our women's ministry. If you're going to have some activity in the church, let it be an ongoing ministry and let it be focused on Titus chapter 2. Make sure that the women in your ministry become Titus II kind of women. Do, do the young women know what it means to love their husbands if they're married? If they have children, do they understand what it means to love their children? Do they have self-control? Are they pure in their thinking? 
Are they workers at home? Do they know how to manage their homes, manage their finances? Do they know how to make their homes a home that's, uh, that's something that, uh, uh, a place that the husband would want to go to? Are they kind? Do they know how to use their homes as a venue for hospitality? Are they, are they, are they nice persons to be with? And are they submissive to their husbands? Naiintindihan ba nila ito? Okay, ang galing mag-evangelize. Oo, oh, ang galing mag ng Bible study. Pero yung mister nila, inis na inis sa kanila. Tuwing Bible study, ano ba, ano oras ka na naman umuwi ngayong gabi? Hindi ka pa naghahanda ng pagkain. Tapos lagi na lang nagagalit. Buti pa, pinakasalan mo na lang yung pastor mo. Bakit ba sa akin ka pa nag-asawa? O kaya, eh, doon ka na lang sa church tumira. Mas, mas nililinis mo pa yung church. Pag merong linisan doon, malinis. Yung bahay natin, ang dumi. O, oh, eh kung ganun, alam ba ng mga misis yung kanilang priority? So, this is something I want you to think about, women. Because this is the... This is what Paul said. This is what it means to have a healthy church. Old men, this is what you do. Older women, older women, do you how know, do you know how to teach these things? Do you know it? Do you have the experience? Can you say, okay, I'll get a young wi- woman. O, likal, mag-stay ka sa bahay namin isang linggo. Tignan mo kung paano ko gawin. Ako magmamodel nitong sinasabi ng Titus chapter 2. Can you do it? Think about it. So, that's my suggestion. That's number one. Number two, uh, in the home, as I said, women, women, I know that this is difficult. This requires supernatural strength from the Lord. This requires the filling of the Holy Spirit. So, may I appeal to the husbands and to the children and to this congregation, let us pray for women in our church. Mahirap ito eh. Instead of just saying, O ikaw, hindi mo ginagawa yung sinabi ni pastor. Ano kang klaseng Christian? Ano kang klaseng nanay? No, don't do that. Pray for them. Kasi pwede naman din kayong balikan eh. Eh bakit ikaw, husband ka, ginagawa mo rin ba yung sinasabi ng Bible? Ganun din. Kailangan din nila ng prayers. We all need prayers. This is something that is beyond the normal and the natural. It requires the power of the Holy Spirit to obey the Word of God. Kaya nga nagre-rebelde yung mundo dito. Eh. The world doesn't like teachings like this. It's so contrary to their nature. That's why we need to pray. That's why if you're not a Christian, that's why you're rebelling, you need to submit your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior so that He will transform your heart. You can never start obeying this, these principles if Jesus is not in your heart. Another thing that I'd like to say. Children and, and, and the husband, have you appreciated your wife or your mother if they're workers at home? Please, kids, don't treat your mother as a, as a maid or as a helper. Have you ever showed your appreciation to your mother? Maybe finally, she's been exerting efforts to cook. Maybe her cooking is not that good tulad nung dati ninyong maid or dati ninyong cook. But she's exerting every effort. She's cleaning. She's doing things. Have you embraced her? Have you kissed your mother? Have you said, Mama, thank you so much that you're obeying the Word of God? Maybe what you can do is save up from your allowance and buy something that she would appreciate. Or if you're already a worker, maybe you're, you're already employed, baka magandang susunod yung sweldo mo. Baka gusto mong ibigay sa nanay mo. Mami, ito para sa'yo. Magbakasyon ka dito. Ito, pambili mo ito ng ano. Gusto mong bumili ng bagong damit o ganyan. O, di, why don't you do that? Show appreciation. Husbands, show appreciation. Have you been saying, alam mo darling, ang natutuwa talaga ako sa'yo. You're a blessing to me. O puro na lang bang, ano ba tong luto mo? Ano ba tong, ano ba? Puro na lang criticism ang naririnig. But you haven't seen all of the other efforts that she's been doing to make the home a place for you and for the children. Husbands. And that includes me. I'm talking to, to myself as well. I need to do that more and more. And then finally, as I mentioned before, Women who are workers at home, please 
don't ever look down upon yourself and say, I'm just a plain housewife. As I said, you must rejoice in the Lord that you're following God's word. Don't look down upon yourself. Remember, as I mentioned before, when you're a worker at home, you are already in top management. So, dapat yung utak ng pamilya, utak ng mga anak, utak ng mister, utak ng missis, Lord, salamat dito sa, sa responsibility na to, inaayos ko to, inaasikaso ko to, and we must have a high view of women who are, in, who are prioritizing their homes. We must honor them for doing so. We must use them as models. They must be the teachers of our younger women. And I'm sure when their time is up, when they die and they face the Lord, God is going to honor them. It's not that successful businesswoman who was able to make millions and millions for the company who's going to receive the greatest commendation in heaven. I think it's going to be the mother who followed Titus chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. She may not be appreciated by society. She may not be looked up by her classmates in high school, but it doesn't matter. As long as she's following the Word of God, she's obeying God's Word, she will receive those precious words, Thou good and faithful servant of mine, enter into the joys of your Master. I pray that we'll have more women like that in our church. Let's come before the Lord in prayer.